Good morning. This is Prophet Six, Family Prophet to the Angel, the Church, to the Laodiceans. God bless you. I want to come to you with a devotional thought. And it's from Mount of Blessings, page 98, paragraph 2. And it reads, and I read, The people who listen to Christ's words, the people who listen to the words of Christ, were still anxiously waiting for some announcement of the earthly kingdom. Let me unpack that for you. I want to give you the, I'm going to open, I want to try to open up some of y'all prophetic eye. The people who listen to Christ's words, that's equivalent to saying the people who were studying the Bible, the people who were God's true church at the time, giving the oracles of God. Listen to me, listen. The people who listened to the words of Christ were still anxiously waiting, watching for some announcement of the earthly kingdom. Now, let me unpack that earthly kingdom for you. They were anxiously watching for a worldly kingdom with the moniker of the kingdom of God posted above it. Let me say it this way. The reason why Seventh-day Adventists cannot ever, and when I say ever, I'm not saying in totality. I'm saying as a corporate body, the Seventh-day Adventist church is doomed, okay? The handwriting's on the wall. It's done. It's a done deal. The only thing they have to look forward to is projectile vomiting, okay? Okay. So what I mean is there are going to be individuals in the Seventh-day Adventist church that's going to receive the gospel of the kingdom. The Jews didn't receive the gospel of the kingdom because they were so, remember people, they were Israel after the flesh. So when they read the Bible or listened to Jesus teach about the kingdom, all they could think about in their minds Whereas was the kingdom of God behaving and functioning and with the same spirit that Rome did. That's what this means when it says earthly kingdom. It don't just simply mean a kingdom on earth. It means a kingdom that's of the nature of the devil but has a tattoo of Christ on his forehead. So, here you have here. This is a um, this is prophetic. I'm prophesying now. As I speak in the Holy Ghost, the people were listening to the words of Christ the people who were listening to the words of Christ, the people who were studying the Revelation seminar, the people who were studying the Sabbath school lessons, the people who were watching 3ABN, Hope Channel. Listen. They were anxiously watching for some announcement of a demonic kingdom. That's really what this is saying here. That's really what this is saying. It was like Jesus was speaking and trying to get their minds as a nation into the kingdom of God. But because of the Biblical Research Committee, the GC, and all these independent ministries, with every wind of doctrine, with no living prophet, by the way, because of that, when even when they heard Christ in person speaking about the kingdom, all they could think about was what the Revelation seminars taught, amazing facts taught, 
Doug Basher taught. David Asher had taught. That's all they could think about. So as Jesus is speaking, Satan is catching away his words by what they was what was already implanted in their minds and in their hearts. Jesus is trying to get their minds out of the out of Satan's kingdom into his kingdom. And it's a battle going on as he's talking. We're reading about the battle right now. The people were the people who listened to the words of Christ talking about Adventists, ancient Adventists, ancient Seventh-day Adventists, ancient Laodiceans. The people who were listening to the Christ's words, Christ, were still anxiously waiting for some announcement of a earthly kingdom or a demonic kingdom or a carnal kingdom or a wicked kingdom that was like Rome. Look at this. While Jesus was opening to them the treasures of heaven, while Jesus was opening to them the kingdom of heaven, while Jesus was opening up to them the, na the spiritual nature of the kingdom of heaven that God wanted on earth, in earth, look what they were thinking about. The question uppermost in many minds was, how will a connection with him advance our prospects in the world? In other words, this is what they were thinking. Oh, I'm speaking in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How will our, I'm going to interpret this for you. How will our connection with Jesus inside the Seventh-day Adventist church advance our prospects in building up, galvanizing, and propagating Satan's kingdom. Go to Mount of Blessings, page 98, paragraph 2. Read it. That's what this is saying in the Holy Ghost, y'all. Nobody can teach you how to read like this in no school. You got to have living. Pro what you think school of the prophets were for? To teach people how to think in the Holy Ghost. Jesus showed them. Watch this now. Jesus showed that in making the things of the world, that means right here, of the world means of the nature of the world in context of the spirit of the world, of the spirit of the devil. Jesus showed that in making things of the world, their supreme anxiety. Now look at this. They were making the things that, they were making the things of the world, their supreme anxiety, while they were listening to Jesus' words. While they were studying the Bible, while they were at Andrews in theology school, seminary. Look what it says. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Jesus showed that in making the things of the world, their spiritual, their supreme anxiety, they were like the heathen. It showed they were atheists. They studied the Bible every day, but everything they studied, it was how this is going to advance me in building up the kingdom of Satan in the world instead of the kingdom of God in the world. Boy. If you get what I'm talking about, leave a comment. Just say, I get it. I want to know if somebody gets it. Even if it's one person, it's worth it. Even if it's no person, it's worth it. Jesus showed that in making the things of the world their supreme anxiety, they were like the heathen nations about them. No difference. That's why I always say that there's no difference between the Seventh-day Adventist church in spirit, in spirit, 
than any other denomination. In spirit, they are all clones with different names. And that's exactly what Ellen G. White is saying right here. There is no difference between the Seventh-day Adventists in spirit. In the way that they study the Bible. In the way these schools operate. In the way that they are set up administration. Jesus showed that in making the things of the world their supreme anxiety, they were like the heathen nation about them, living, li watch this now, living as if there were no God. Ooh, 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 boy. Living as if there were no God. They were atheists. The Jewish nation as a corporate body now, not every single individual, as a corporate structure, it was an atheistic church. Heathenistic. You hear that? Can you hear that in the Holy Ghost, in your own heart? Not just with my words, but can you hear it? What the Spirit is saying to the church. They were like the heathen nations about them living as if there were no God whose tender care is over his creatures. Woo! You know what this is saying right here? This is saying that the Seventh-day Adventist church is an atheistic denomination in spirit. It's atheism. Independent or whatever. The Davidi Let me tell you this. The, Div the Davidians, they're atheists too. As a corporate, they're atheists. The Davidians are more atheistic than Adventists are. And, and they, they give lip service to Brother Harder's writings as much as the Jews gave lip service when Jesus was preaching the Sermon on the Mount. When they read Brother Hardest's writings, all they're thinking about is how Brother Hardest's writing is going to advance their pursuits in building up the kingdoms of the world. I'm telling you, y'all. I'm telling you. There is no difference between Seventh-day Adventist denomination, Davidians, uh, 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 Hope International, all these break offshoots, upshoots, whatever you want to call them, branches and whatever. It's no difference from them than the atheist, atheistic and heathenistic religions. No difference in spirit. We ain't building up nothing on earth. That has any spiritual nature. Nothing. But anyway. This is Prophet 6. Family Prophet to the Angel of the Church. To the land of sin. With a strong devotional thought. I didn't know it was going to be this strong. But boy I had to. Actually. I got so much. I can't even give it all to you. It's just way too much. <laughs> Woo. See, I don't, this is how I read this book. This is how I read the Bible, this book. This is how I look at nature, society, news reports. God takes me into the Holy Ghost. God is not going to do anything spiritual without a living prophet. No revival or reformation is ever going to happen without a living prophet. No tithe is going to be able to brought, bring, be brought into God's storehouse or offerings without a living prophet on the scene to order and direct the work. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. This is Prophet 6, family prophet to the angel of the pro Prophet 6. Prophet to the angel of the church to lay the sins, lay the sin, meaning people declaring their own judgment. They don't even know it. That's what lay the sin means, if you didn't know.
people declaring their own judgment. They don't even know it. They think they're declaring the judgment of Babylon. What they're de declaring is the judgment of the living on their own selves and the ingathering of the 144,000. Davidians have apostatized. Adventists have apostatized. Every denomination on earth has apostatized. But truth is marching on. And God has raised up at least one living prophet that I know of. I'm sure there are probably others out there. I don't know. I'm open to it. I hope there are. But anyway, that's it. Bye.